in this video i will discuss about ellingham's uh, diagram so the purpose of uh, or the use of ellingham's diagram will be to select the best reducing agent to reduce metal oxide into metal so we know that normally metal oxide will be in the format like zno if we want to get that uh, zinc from this uh, zno zinc oxide i have to reduce it so i'll be using a reducing agent to reduce the zinc oxide into zn so by using this ellingham's diagram i can select a suitable reducing agent to reduce the zinc so like that i can use it for many metal oxides so that the metal oxides will be reduced to their respective metals so this is the purpose of ellingham's diagram so basically to select the best reducing agent to reduce metal oxide into metal so what ellingham did he used the thermodynamic equations and he made a diagram or we can call it as a graph and the equation which ellingham used was delta g equal to delta h minus g delta s where g equal to change in free energy change in free energy delta g delta h will be the change in enthalpy and delta s is equal to change in entropy so now i will teach you like how to draw the ellingham's diagram ellingham's diagram is a graph so what it does he has taken that uh, graph x axis and the y axis in this case so x axis you is started using the temperature in the x axis format and here g not f values so g not f is the g values free energy values for the formation of metal oxides so gf is formation of metal oxide and this not will be standard so y axis you plot out the g values and uh, it will be like zero for the negative values in this side minus 200 minus 400 minus 600 like this the negative values and above the zero we'll be having the positive values and here we'll be having the temperature as i'm giving an example so y axis you have taken the g not f values that's nothing but the change in free energy values for the formation of various metal oxides and this will be the temperature now now let me tell you how to draw the graph so before going to the ellingham's diagram i want to give some basic things so let us take the graph of y equal to mx plus c so the graph this will be the x axis this will be the y axis and this will be the format of y equal to mx plus c graph so clearly it indicates that as x increases the value of y will increase so this is the format of y equal to mx plus c graph In the same way i can take y equal to minus mx plus c here m is the slope slope is positive m is the slope and you can see that slope is positive here minus m slope is negative so the graph format will be like this as x increases y decreases negative slope so this will be the graph format for y equal to minus mx plus c and this for y equal to mx plus c the third case where m equal to 0 where m equal to 0 means we know that equation is what y equal to mx plus c when m equal to 0 y will be equal to 0 plus c or y equal to c in this case the graph if it is x axis and the y axis the graph will be like this direction that is nothing but parallel to x axis so this in this case it will be parallel to x axis or in, in the ellingham diagram it will be parallel to the temperature so let us take the formation of feo so in case of feo we can take the ion as oxygen it gives feo let us take the two moles of the ion we get two feo so here fe will be a solid oxygen will be the gas and feo will be a solid so equation will be delta g equal to delta h minus t into delta s then what happens is this will be constant this value will be constant value so we are supposed to find only the del s we are supposed to find only the del s so delta s will be change in entropy so how to find that del s value will be number of gaseous moles 
in product number of gases moles in product minus number of gaseous moles present in the reactant present in the reactant so we can see here in the product side only solid is there there are no gases so del s will be equal to zero from the product side and the reactant side we have got oxygen as a gas and this is like one mole so zero minus one so zero minus one will be minus one so plugging in the values here we know that del g will be equal to delta h minus t into this delta s is negative h means it's like minus one so this minus into this minus becomes positive so del g will be equal to delta h plus t delta s so this is the format of y equal to mx plus c where c will be equal to delta h x will be equal to the temperature and m will be equal to delta s so we know that we are getting a graph in the format of y equal to mx plus c so the graph for the formation of co will be there temperature g values will be having a positive slope y equal to mx plus c is a positive slope so this will be the graph for the formation of feo that is fe plus 2 fe plus o2 gives 2 feo this will be the format of the graph so next let us see the formation of carbon monoxide so in case of carbon monoxide carbon plus oxygen gives that carbon monoxide and once again i told delta h is constant so we have to find the value of delta s so delta s will be the number of moles in the number of moles of gases present in the product here we can see in the product i have got a gas which is carbon monoxide and two moles are present so it will be two whereas in case of uh, the reactants we have got the oxygen gas and it is like one mole so it will be two minus one so delta s value equal to one substituting here i will get delta g equal to delta h minus t into because this delta s value is positive i am getting a positive value here that is plus 1 so finally plus into minus into plus will be minus so del h minus t delta s del g will be equal to so this will be in the format of y equal to minus mx plus c because we have got the negative sign here y equal to minus mx plus c therefore the graph of uh, the formation of carbon monoxide will be because it is minus mx plus c the graph will be this direction and here we got the temperature we have the temperature in this case and the g not value is there like that so this will be the graph for formation of co so now let us see the formation of carbon dioxide the equation will be carbon plus oxygen gives co2 and here we can find the delta s value so that is nothing but number of moles of gases in the product so in the product side i got one mole of co2 so what and the reactant also i got one mole of o2 so 1 minus 1 so del s value will be equal to 0 so substituting here what i get is like y equal to mx plus c and because we know that this part becomes 0 del g equal to del h minus t into delta s so we know that this is c this is x and this is m so this delta s is nothing but the m part that becomes zero zero to anything will be zero so i'll get delta g equal to delta h or y equal to c this entire part becomes zero this mx part becomes zero in this case so the graph will be which is x axis and the y axis and we know you have taken the temperature here and the g not values here so the graph will be like a line which should be parallel to the x axis and in case of ellinger's diagram this line will be parallel to the temperature whenever that s equal to 0 i mean del s equal to 0 del s equal to 0 you will get a parallel line which will be i mean which will be parallel to the temperature so we have seen three things like uh, positive slope negative slope and a parallel line so we have seen the graphs for formation of feo positive slope formation of co negative slope formation of co2 a parallel line and one more uh, type of spike we can see in the formation of zinc oxide so the graph will be like this temperature and will be with the g not f values so in the formation of some metal oxides 
you can see a positive slope and there will be a sudden spike and there will be a sudden spike. So positive slope at a sudden spike. Why this is happening means whenever there is a change in phase from solid to liquid. During the process when the solid gets converted to liquid like that, we will be getting a positive slope and a sudden spike and that we can see in the case of formation of zinc oxide. So these four things will be present in the Ellingham's diagram. So we have studied all the four individually. Now let us make the graph together. So Ellingham's diagram graph will be temperature in this case and G not G not values will be here, G not F values will be present here. So now what happens is first we will start with the positive slope that is FeO. So I will draw FeO here. This is formation of FeO. Next part let me make the formation of CO a negative slope. So this is a positive slope which we got from FeO then a negative slope which we got from the formation of carbon monoxide then a straight line for carbon dioxide formation of carbon dioxide that's a parallel line to the temperature so this will be formation of carbon dioxide and then later i told you we are getting that uh, formation of zeno it will be like a positive slope with a sudden spike so probably i can think like this a positive slope and maybe a sudden spike like this so this will be the formation of Zeno. So if you take any Ellingham's diagram, you can see these four things. So one will be the positive slope, the other will be the negative slope, then there will be a parallel line and fourth type will be having a positive slope and there will be a sudden spike. In this case, when the solid gets converted to liquid, we can find these kind of things like that. Okay, so this will be the basics of uh, Ellingham's diagram or how to draw the Ellingham's diagram. In the next video, we will see how we are going to apply based on this graph to select the best reducing agent and the various observations. Thank you.